Hi there. Welcome to another pathophysiology video. Today we're going to have a little look at osteoarthritis. Before we get started, let's find out what you already know. So question one, which part of the joint is affected by osteoarthritis? Is it the bone, the tendon, the cartilage, or all of the above? Feel free to take a moment and pause this video to have a think about the answer. And the answer is C. Osteoarthritis is a cartilage problem. Question two. At which joints would Heberden's nodes be found? Is it at the distal interphalangeal joint, the radiocarpal joint, the proximal interphalangeal joint, or the carpal metacarpal joints? And the answer is A. Heberden's nodes affects the distal interphalangeal joints, while Bouchard's nodes affects the proximal interphalangeal joints. And finally, which of the following is not a radiological finding of osteoarthritis? Osteophytes, air pockets, narrow joint space, or bone cysts? The answer is B. The other radiological finding to look out for with osteoarthritis is sclerosis. Don't worry if you didn't know the answers to these questions, because we're going to revisit them at the end of the video. So, we're going to have a little look at what osteoarthritis is, some of the symptoms, the pathophysiology and the grading of cartilage damage, clinical findings, and we're going to revisit those questions at the end. What is osteoarthritis? It's the most common arthropathy characterized by degeneration of joint articular cartilage. So osteoarthritis is a cartilage problem. And it's important to distinguish this from rheumatoid arthritis, which is a synovial problem. It commonly affects the hips, the knee, and small joints like the hands and feet. You can have primary osteoarthritis where the cause is unknown and risk factors includes aging, obesity, being female, or occupational risks which involve manual handling. There's also secondary osteoarthritis where the cause is known. So this is due to things like trauma, infection, infiltrative disease, connective tissue diseases. So symptoms of osteoarthritis. Classical symptoms include pain, joint stiffness, and loss of function. Now with pain and joint stiffness, the patient will normally say that these worsen with activity. And once again, it's important to distinguish this from rheumatoid arthritis where pain and joint stiffness improves with activity. So the pathophysiology of osteoarthritis, you get an altered distribution of biomechanical forces, which leads to biochemical changes. So your chondrocytes try to restore the cartilage by dividing, but they remain poorly differentiated and therefore incapable of producing extracellular matrix components. Overall, you get a net loss of matrix components. So in terms of collagen, the amount of collagen stays constant, but the fibrils are thinner and more disorganized. Therefore, you get reduced tensile strength. In terms of your proteoglycans, these normally attract water but a loss of these leads to a decreased osmotic pull and therefore reduce resistance to compression, especially with repeated stress. And therefore, you get an overall damage to the cartilage. So, grading of cartilage damage. Grade 1 tends to be softening and swelling. Grade 2, which is fibrillation, and that's usually just surface cartilage damage. Grade 3 is fissuring, and that's when the damage has reached down to the level of the subchondral bone. 
and grade 4, which is ebonated bone. And that's when friction in the joint causes reactive conversion of subchondral bone to an ivory-like surface at the site of cartilage erosion. So clinical findings of osteoarthritis. In your history and clinical examination, you'll get that joint stiffness that worsens with activity. You can get deformities, especially in the fingers. So Bouchard's nodes tends to occur at the proximal interphalangeal joints. And Heberden's nodes occur at the distal interphalangeal joints. And in your radiological findings, there's four classical features you need to look out for. So narrowing or loss of the joint space, osteophytes, subchondral sclerosis, and bone cysts. And that's it. Let's have a look at those questions again. So which part of the joint is affected by osteoarthritis? Is it the bone, the tendon, the cartilage, or all the above? And the answer is cartilage. Remember, osteoarthritis is a cartilage problem. It's important to distinguish this from rheumatoid arthritis, which is a synovial problem. Uh, next question, at which joints would Heberden's nodes be found? The distal interphalangeal joints, the radiocarpal joints, the proximal interphalangeal joints, or the carpal metacarpal joints? And the answer is A. Heberden's nodes affects the distal interphalangeal joints in the hands, while Bouchard's nodes affects the proximal interphalangeal joints in the hands. And finally, which of the following is not a radiological finding of osteoarthritis? Osteophytes, ear pockets, narrow joint space, or bone cysts? And the answer is ear pockets. The other radiological finding to be aware of is sclerosis, which is classically seen in osteoarthritis. And that concludes this pathophysiology video on osteoarthritis. Thanks very much for checking it out and I hope it was helpful. Take care now.